Morning Motivators, Taryn here. One of the first questions that we get when people get into endurance sports is why is my heart rate so high when I run? even at a slow pace, even when I'm just warming up. This is so incredibly important for everyone to figure out because low heart rate training where you're spending 70 to 85% of your total training hours in a low heart rate under your zone two heart rate cap, you are going to be faster, you're going to be fresher, throughout the day, you're going to be more metabolically fit, you're gonna be able to burn more fat as fuel, having much, much more endurance, all things lead back to being able to run and exercise at a low heart rate. So we are going to give you five very common reasons that you might have a high heart rate and how to fix it very quickly. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following years, I found endurance sports, lost 65 pounds, won age groups, raced world championships, broke records, and trained and learned from some of the best athletes and coaches in the world. You too can use endurance sports to change your life and accomplish your fitness goals. You just need a system, a system that's meant for us amateurs who wanna be our best while feeling our strongest and healthiest. My company Motive offers that system and I wanna share some of the tips from it today. I remember when I first started running, and it was for years actually this was the case, that I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to running at a low heart rate because it was very hard for me to do. What would happen though is I would go into every single race and yeah, I could do well in a 5K run, a 10K run. I could kind of muscle my way through a half marathon. I could do a sprint triathlon, but anything longer than that 90 minute sort of time range, I was just a mess. I had a very hard time translating the speed that I could do at a sprint triathlon up to even an Olympic, let alone a half Ironman or an Ironman, which was my eventual goal. I couldn't possibly think about doing a trail run or a marathon because I'd just start falling apart at that 90 minute mark. Having a proper training plan helped, having proper nutrition helped, but the third piece was actually building the physiology to be able to run at a low heart rate for a long period period of time. It's critical for you and all of us to develop, so we're going to go through the five most common reasons that I see people struggling with this. The first being, you actually have a high heart rate. This is a perfect scenario for you because this is very fixable. You just have to fix your training zone. I find that about 20% of the population has a genuinely high heart rate and the zones need to be calculated up and that standard calculators don't work. That's why in our app, we use the Carvanen method, which uses your max heart rate and your resting heart rate and then takes percentages of that. So it's customized to your unique physiology. You need to go out and do a max heart rate test. Then you need to sleep with a watch that has a heart rate monitor on it for a few nights. You take three to five beats higher than your maximum heart rate in the maximum heart rate test, your lowest possible heart rate overnight while you're sleeping, put that into a Carvanen formula, and then boom, you have your exact zones. And then you have to trust those zones even if it's hard for you to stay under the zone two heart rate cap. The second thing, and this is probably most common for new athletes, is that you don't yet have the mitochondrial density to be able to train at a low heart rate very effectively. I'll go explain. So to explain mitochondrial density, I've drawn out a cross section, like if somebody cut a leg in half and you looked at it, this is gonna be like super oversimplified, but it'll explain what we're getting at. Let's say this is a leg here with low mitochondrial density. Now mitochondria are the energy producers in the muscles. This is how we translate all of the inputs that we have with food, calories, air, blood, oxygen, all of that stuff into actual movement. But let's say there's low mitochondrial density over here and then with another leg, somebody else's leg, there's super high mitochondrial density, like really high mitochondrial density. Now, these are the energy producers of our muscles. This is how we actually create movement. Now, which one do you think is going to have an easier time creating movement? Obviously the one with much higher mitochondrial density. So let's oversimplify this and say both people are trying to run at a five minute per K 
pace. Well, who do you think is going to have an easier time actually producing energy? It's obviously going to be the one with more energy producers in their muscles as opposed to fewer. The person to go at that same effort level is going to require a higher heart rate, more cycles of what's going on in the body of transferring carbohydrates, fuel, oxygen into the muscles to be able to go at the same effort level. So because there's more cycles, the heart rate is going to be higher. This person here is going to have a higher heart rate. And if you haven't been doing endurance exercise before, ever, you're gonna have this sort of cross section of your leg with not much mitochondrial density. How do we build mitochondrial density? Well. If we look at a five zone training system, mitochondria is really well built here, kind of in the zone one to middle of zone three. Yes, you're going to build a lot more in zone three, but past the end of zone two, you also start building up a lot of lactic acid, a lot of stress hormones. So it's harder to do it day after day after day and then still have the energy to do the zone four and five stuff. Yeah, you might build up more mitochondrial density with zone three, but it's going to hamper all of your intense sessions. You're also not going to be able to train as long, building up as much endurance. So we really like that low intensity zone two so that you can build up more mitochondrial density and then hopefully run at that five minute per K pace at a nice low heart rate. The third thing is related to that last point, but it's that you don't have the metabolic flexibility to be able to run an exercise at a low heart rate effectively either. Again, let me go explain. If you've ever seen one of those charts on a treadmill at a gym, you will see something like this, where there's a graph that is showing at low zone one and two, you're going to be working at a low heart rate, and zone three, a little bit higher heart rate, and zone four, and zone five, even a little bit higher heart rate. What it's also going to probably show is that at these higher heart rates, you're primarily burning carbs as fuel. Low heart rate, it's more fat as fuel. But what if you are somebody who has eaten a traditional Western diet, which tends to be very carb and processed food heavy, which sends your blood glucose up very high. So your body gets really, really good at burning carbs as fuel, not very good at burning body fat as fuel. If you are that type of person, well, your body is naturally going to want to push you up into higher heart rates where it's easier and more common to burn carbs as fuel because that's the fuel that your body can use. And you might say, well, aren't carbs what I'm going to use during my training and racing? Well, yes, sometimes, but to get good at endurance, to be able to go for a long period of time and not run out of energy, i.e. be able to actually endure those long distance events, you need to be able to burn fat as fuel for a long period of time because fat is like super energy dense and you have essentially a limitless amount of energy. How you get good at that is by training at that low heart rate level and getting your body used to being able to burn fat as fuel. So you gotta train more at the low heart rate. The fourth thing is actually counterintuitive and people don't think about this a lot, but it's that you haven't done enough speed training. Having a very high top end means that your bottom end, your slow, easy pace will gradually get pulled up with it. What a lot of people do that is a mistake when they get into low heart rate training or just training in general, where they hear that low intensity is the key to aerobic fitness and endurance, they just go and train at a low effort level all the time. Maybe it's not even at the zone two effort level, maybe it's like zone three kind of effort levels, but that zone two, zone three, it's not enough to make you fast. You need to hit it really hard with some zone four, zone five efforts. That's why that mix of 70 to 85% being low intensity and 30 to 15% being quite high intensity is so critical. You need to have those top end numbers because the high effort levels actually teach the mitochondria 
how to function. So you need both. You can't ignore the high intensity thinking that you're going to shortcut your heart rate training by just focusing on low intensity. And the fifth thing, this is an instant fix. It is running in heart rate conditions that would shoot you through the roof in any condition, no matter how fit you are. Those tend to be hills and heat. If you're running in hills and you're running in heat, your heart rate's just going to be higher and it's going to be more stressful on your body. So I actually really like heart rate and the fact that it adjusts so well because you're not just saying, oh, here's my zone two pace and I'm going to stick at my pace. Well, if you just stick with your zone two pace and then go run up a 10% hill, you're gonna be working way harder than a zone two effort level. And physiologically, your heart rate's going to be really high, so it's going to be much more taxing on your body. I like that heart rate automatically adjusts based on heat, based on hills, based on your sleep, based on if you've traveled. Because it has that built-in adjustment mechanism, it's always going to dial you into the right low intensity training zone. Fact of the matter is that you just gotta put your ego at the door if you're training in heat and hills and maybe do some run walks or just turn it into a hike. There's no shame in that because you're doing the right thing for your body. You're doing the thing that your body needs to be healthy, to be fit, to perform well in your races. Fix one or all of those five things that you might be dealing with and I guarantee over the course of several months and several years, you're going to become a far better athlete than you ever imagined. But you gotta go through that checking your ego at the door and being patient for the progress to happen. The nice thing though, is that the progress from low intensity training layers itself year upon year upon year upon year, whereas top end speed training, it's really hard to hang on to as we get older. So we have to lean back onto that low intensity stuff because it can just continue to develop over decades. Thank you for watching Motivators. If you're looking for a training plan that incorporates these methods that is as good as a one-on-one -on -one coach, but as inexpensive as doing it yourself, check out our Motive training app that covers triathlons, running races, duathlons, swim runs, and cycling events. It's a link in the description below where you can check out your customized training plan for free. Also, if you rather listen to these tips, we also publish these videos in podcast format on the Terran's Motive Method podcast, so you can check that out. And if you don't want to do either of those things, but you found this video helpful, hit us up with a virtual high five by smashing the like button below. Later, motivators.